हेलो एवरीवन सो इन दिस डे थ्री सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द डिफरेंट यूज केस स्टडीज और आई वुड से द प्रॉब्लम्स दैट वी कैन सॉल्व विद द हेल्प ऑफ न्यूरल नेटवर्क और डीप लर्निंग यू माइट बी वंडरिंग दैट वाई आई हैव टेकन दिस यूज केस स्टडी ऑन द थर्ड डे इट जनरली इन ऑलमोस्ट ऑल द कोर्सेज यू माइट हैव सीन दैट वी डू द कैपस्टोन प्रोजेक्ट एट द लास्ट राइट दिस इज अ जनरल फॉर्मेट फर्स्ट फी फर्स्ट वी स्टडी द थिंग्स एंड देन वी सॉल्व द प्रोजेक्ट बेस्ड ऑन वॉट वी हैव स्टडीड सो फार बट आई पर्सनली फील दिस इज नॉट अ वेरी गुड अप्रोच द रीजन बिहाइंड इफ यू नो दैट वॉट इज द प्रॉब्लम एग्जिस्टिंग ओके देन ओनली यू विल बी फील मोर इंटरेस्टेड इन नोइंग इट सोल्यूशन सपोज If you are facing some problem, uh, in something, okay, let's suppose if you are doing or you are doing a paperwork, you are not able to understand what is the problem. Then only you will feel that okay, when you will read the related document, then only you will understand okay, this is the problem, this is a major situation where you can use your solution. Okay, so basically, deep learning is nothing; it is just a solution. Okay, so how you can apply a solution? For that, you need to understand the problem first. Okay. that's the reason i have taken this use case studies thing in the first day itself that's why i have taken this at the day third itself you can better know about the problem first that's why i have taken it on the third day third steps only now before we understand the problems let's understand the type of types of the data that we can deal with with the help of neural networks so as i said before neural networks are designed because we uh, had lots of data to deal with and it was very difficult for machine learning algorithm to deal with large amount of the data so first we need to understand that okay if we are talking about the large amount data what kind of data possibly it can be so it can have a three kind of data one is the image data second is the text data third is the signal based data I talk about the image data first. Okay, uh, we know that computer does not understand images. Generally, how the computer see a image in the form of pixels. Okay, and we one pic image can be formed with different number of pixels. Generally, twenty eight to cross twenty eight is the minimum, but it can go to one zero eight zero cross one eight zero eight zero pixels. Okay, so you can understand this is only about for one image. so if i am taking a huge images suppose if you are dealing with the 10k images then the data will be very huge and also it is called unstructured data okay so it's very difficult to deal with the unstructured data for machine learning algorithm so we see okay if we have to solve any problem that relate that is related with the images it means there might be possibility that deep learning algorithm or neural network can be a better solution similarly with the text data text data is also generally considered a huge like we have lots of paragraphs documents and similar kind of content which is huge in amount unstructured also so generally in that case also we prefer deep learning solutions uh, to get the better accuracy and the third is signal based data in the signal based data also the similar kind of thing we face So if I ask you like okay you are starting your project with deep learning or neural networks then what kind of project you can take or you can start with so I'll suggest you always that you start with the hand written digit detection why hand written digit detection hand written digit detection is the simplest form of an image you know a image always uh, formed either the black and white image or maybe in the colors rgb pixels it has so in rgb pixels there are three layers or i would say it's in three dimensions so it's difficult to deal with so if i'm talking about the images it's better to take black and white now why hand written digit detection is a very famous data set which is called mns data set and it contains all the images of uh, digits which are hand written okay so in that case what happens you can see here in this image right if there is one line it is there apart from that all the space is blank right here this is blank so i can say that all the pixel where this line is not present it is considered as a zero but where this line is present you can see these are marked in the red and these are some these have some value like 
whatever color intensity it is it has of the black color okay and that's how it helps me to predict that what is that letter or what is that digit about so generally hand rated digit detection is considered or it is equivalent to the hello world program of the programming when you start programming right you first type the hello world similarly if you are trying to solve any nlp related or i would say computer vision related problems with the sol- with the help of neural network we generally consider heard that uh, start with the hand rated digit detection so you can understand the how it is working or how it is uh, taking the images in or pixels in you can visualize it better here you can understand but you it's very good project to start with start with but there is a problem here that is amnist hand written digit recognition it's a very very common or hello world kind of projects and titanic project is generally considered hello world of machine learning so that's why these two projects people generally keep in your their cv and it's really difficult for an interviewer to identify generally that how good you are because generally it's the basic project everyone do it so it's it's exactly similar suppose if you are doing one thing you are keeping your uh, this project your hello world project in your cv and saying to the interviewer that you know the programming okay now you can sense how ridiculous it can be so once you get understand uh, or get a feel about how does hand written digit recognition works then you can work with the little advanced level of projects like that comes under image classification image classification plus localization or object detection techniques face recognition techniques so i just suggest you that start with a simple project with the black and white image classification then with colored image classification object detection then face recognition also one more thing uh, when i'm talking about these three kinds of problem it there might be multiple problems in the image image segment itself but you have to understand that in what kind of task deep learning or neural networks are good at first is the classification that you can see here so apart from that there is one more task that is called pattern matching in the pattern matching also it actually helps the when i'm saying object detection or localization in that also it's like it's based on the pattern matching thing okay so you have to first understand what kind of problem i'm trying to solve here and one more thing i would like to let you know as a as a tip you can understand this thing that no one will let you know ever that what kind of problem it is no one will directly say you and suppose if a client is approaching to you and that person wants to solve some problem right he or she will never let you know that it okay this is a classification problem and just go ahead with that no you have to understand the problem by your own okay in which kind of or in which category i have to keep and when you whenever you are dealing with the client you have to always ask what kind of data i am having okay ask them um, ask them that okay you are saying me to work with the neural network or deep learning models i am i totally understand that but please let me know what kind of data i am going to deal with okay and then you have to understand what kind of problem it is it's a classification it's a detection it's a pattern matching it's a recommendation based on that you can build your solutions okay so apart from that this is all about images that we have discussed so far apart from that there is one more problem comes into this segment that is speech to text conversion this also you will understand uh, that there are different kinds of neural network based on that it is decided that uh, which kind of neural network is used for which kind of problem generally speech to text conversion you take a different network is used as compared to what we use for the image images okay so but yeah this is again it's a very huge data and unstructured data so we deal such kind of problems with the help of neural network and deep learning apart from that you can see the language translation is a very important uh, project that people do uh, and also one more thing i would like to tell tell you here even there are so many op- open source projects are there still they have not achieved very good accuracy on the language translation model so if you are looking for some advanced projects 
to do in deep learning later on definitely i'll suggest you to to pick one language translation project you can translate or take two languages or if you are from india then you can take uh, two indic languages which is very common nowadays so it 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 really helps uh, you to build your portfolio in a very uh, dynamic way i can say now okay i have understood these kind of problems but do i have to follow different kinds of pipeline or i would say how will i actually make such kind of projects so i'll let you know one thing first of all architecture changes problem changes but there is a fixed pipeline that we follow in all kinds of deep learning or neural network related models first we collect the data if it's an image we will collect images if it's a text data we will collect the document and then we go for the data processing when i'm saying data processing for images case it might be the data augmentation where you are rotating the image you are tilting the image you are taking the mirror image of that particular uh, photo right but in case of text data it may be uh, text cleaning or you are removing extra words or maybe there are you are correcting the spelling mistakes so data processing will be the same but the types so or the way data processing is done it changes okay after that you go to the literature survey this is the most important step that generally people miss if you are working for a client or you are working for a freelancing project then it's very important to do the literature survey without that you can't do any project and you might have heard this thing in interviews uh, generally it is asked that uh, suppose if you are using a particular algorithm you are using convolutional neural network we will un- understand it later just understand there is a type of architecture that is convolutional neural network if i am using that then interviewer will definitely ask that why did you use that network only okay so in that case how will you answer that thing in general if you have worked in the companies then they it is generally expected that before applying that algorithm you have done the literature survey why because you might have seen similar problems you have seen that what kind of solutions other people have designed and based on that you propose a solution and for that you take a decision based on the literature survey okay once literature survey is done i have identified okay these were the similar problems this kind of architecture other people have used to solve these kind of things then i'll make my own model architecture or i'll take a pre existing architecture and then go ahead with the model train okay here i'll train the my model with my collected data and then i'll go for the evaluation okay i train my data but i should check that if it is working well or not then i'll check and i'll cal- extract out the inference out of it okay whatever i have calculated or suppose if i am saying 99% accurate it is that it is a dog okay but actually it is a dog or not because in the, when i'm saying that i'm classifying it's a dog or cat it's very easily uh, identifiable but suppose if you are trying to identify some brain tumor okay then maybe it is saying that okay i'm 99% sure it's a brain tumor or maybe it's a uh, like it's a last stage maybe but in actual it is not right so you have to evaluate it properly you have to take inference out of it and then once everything is checked testing is done then you can deploy that model somewhere and i'm saying deploy i have asked this question in the interview what is deployment and i was surprised that people don't know about the deployment deployment means this is a, it's just a simple thing that you are making your project accessible to the different users so that they can directly utilize it it's like you are the developer they are the people who are going to use it they don't know anything about the tech stack what you have used how you have built it they just use it okay they use your product to do that or to achieve that level we have to deploy it somewhere deploy mean you have to actually upload it somewhere in the layman term it's not exactly uploading you have to take care of lots of thing but you can think in that way you are putting it somewhere where or your all of your friends anywhere or any person in the world can access it so this is how a pipeline of a neural network can be built and it will be the same no matter whatever is the problem few things here and there might be changed maybe data processing is not needed 
or maybe sometimes model model evaluation techniques are being changed or maybe some problems only need a uh, model evaluation inference is not needed so it depends on the problem statement now i have already discussed that what kind of data processing can be done it's a resizing it's a rescaling if it's a image it's a data these are uh, things are called data augmentation techniques we will discuss in detail once we will start reading i'm just telling the overview right now okay apart from that we are going to do literature survey to understand that it's ann cnn rnn these are the types of the neural network we will discuss that too in the detail you have to just understand that for each kind of data generally uh, one particular architecture works better we will understand it later that why it happens like that why the architectures are being designed okay so uh, in this session this is all i wanted to discuss i hope uh, you have understood the kind of use case studies that we try to solve with the help of deep learning where we do we use it and how do we make a pipeline i'll suggest you to do one thing now that go and search on google that the problems that people have solved with the help of deep learning so that you can get a fair idea okay these are the projects that can be solved and keep one project in your mind okay why i'm saying this if you keep one project suppose if you are saying i have to uh, do the machine translation or machine language translation or I, let's suppose if i want to make a model which can translate my la english language to hindi language okay so whenever you read any network or any architecture you will read you will always try to analyze or compare it with that problem statement okay if i am reading this architecture does it help or how can i implement it to build my solution can i do to convert english language to hindi language by using this model such kind of thoughts will automatically will come uh, in your mind when you have a goal in your thing that okay i have to solve this problem by studying this these solutions okay that's the reason we have discussed it okay and tomorrow in tomorrow session we will discuss the complete road map Uh, what things you need to become a deep learning engineer how you are going to go ahead with that lots of things are there so we will discuss it tomorrow thank you